Hi, uh, today I will be uh, showing you some of my personal tips and tricks for doing mosaic overlay crochet. Uh, like I said in my tutorial video, I'm not really a huge fan of the open back and the work at the end with the weaving in or closing in or tying all these ends. So I'm going to show you how to secure these as you go and also show you some tricks to close this up. So the first one is you could take a needle. Um, these are for crochet. I found them in the crochet, crochet section, but you could take a needle with a big eye um, and use your same colored thread and come through and close in the loops when you are finished. Get a better angle. So you could come through and just close it up with one of these, you know, same colored thread. And then but I'm going to show you the two tricks to do it as you go. So I have already started. The first trick will be is really simple. First I'll show you the the ends here how to and put them away as you go. So I am on the pattern color. I'm working the same pattern as the last video, so if you still have it, I am at the halfway point with the five doubles in the pattern in the uh, framing color and 15 in the 15 singles. So here we are. At this point the pattern the diamond starts getting smaller, so okay, so just as you start in the last every time you go both loops. and pull your first loop through. Now this is where I take the tail, put it over, do a single over that, do a double, I mean, do a chain, do your chain, do your single, then you're going to do your drop down doubles, but when you drop down, you're going to make sure you have this tail right here with the front loop and do your double crochet over it. Now I like to do it to maybe three, four times, depending on how much space I have to do it. So then I've gone over that tail two times, and now it's gonna be, flip it back over so it's behind, and then finish up your doubles. So this row is five doubles. One, two, three, four, five. So then your tail's now closed in here in the beginning. It's gonna, you'll see in the next row how it gets covered up. So your tail is now secured within the row. 
Now to close up the back, my first trick, now this depends on which one I use. I like to use this one like if you're making a bag. Uh, you can do this one on a blanket. You can do it pretty much anything if you are looking to go a little bit faster than the next technique I show you. So you take your needle, your crochet hook, you go through that back loop, because these are back loop singles, you go through that back loop, but instead of grabbing your, and doing a single, and leaving that open, right there, what you're going to do, is you're going to go through the back loop of the pattern color, see if I can get a better angle here, zoom in okay so you're gonna go through that back loop of your pattern color you go back to that previous row grab the back loop of that and then pull it through and do your single so back loop of the pattern color, back loop of your framing color in the previous row. So you're going to have both back loops pull through, do your single. Then you have both loops pull through. So you can see that when you go through the both loops, you now close up all of these little openings. So all of these get closed up as you go because you grab that back row. So back loop, back loop, and single crochet. See. Now let's see, back loop, back loop, single crochet. This goes pretty quickly once you get used to grabbing those two back loops. So you can back loop and back loop. So you have both back loops do your single. So then that continues through all of your back loop single crochets. Back loop, back loop, single. Back loop, back loop, single. Back loop, back loop, single. Back loop, back loop, single, back loop, back loop, single. So you have your back loop singles here and you've also come back here and closed that. So you don't have these little gaping Especially when you're doing a very large pattern, these tend to stand out pretty predominantly. So then you do your, so then you have this tail here on the side from your previous row of the framing color. So do a couple of front loop doubles. 
And then make sure you have enough tail over here. And you're gonna do just like you did in the front of the, over here. So you make sure that your tail is there with that front loop and you do your double right over it, secure it into that row. Secure it with three to four stitches, depending on how many, um, depending on how long your tail is and how many, um, you know, doubles or singles you have over here. So now that tail is back here. So now you have your tail from your prior row. So if it's in the back, go through both loops, put that tail over on the other side. And you do your single and your chain. Cut the row, the yarn. Give it a tug and then just make sure this is, give this one a little tug. So now it's sitting back here and I'll show you in the next row how to cover these. So do your first stitch, both loops, bring your tail over single, double, now your tail. I, I give it a little tug just so it's nice and doesn't look sloppy over here. Then do your, so the first stitch is a little awkward, but you bring your tail, make sure your hook is underneath of it back loop, back loop, and single crochet right over that tail. So you now have it secured. I do it, like I said, two to three times. So that's two, working that tail into the stitches. Now, what I do is I, let's see if I can get a good angle. I take, I take this back loop and I tuck those down inside that channel that you're creating. Back loop, single back loop, tuck them down, so you see that here these two tails are, and you go through your back loop here, push them down, go through back loop here, and do your single. Do your single. Okay, so now the row starts, now this starts coming in for the top of your, so you still do this back loop single, just like a regular back loop single. So there's no, there's nothing back here for you to secure. So you just go ahead and do your back loop single and your front doubles. So now that we are bringing this diamond in, I, I got all the way to halfway so this wouldn't take 
you know, a whole hour. So, you do your front loop doubles. And on the end of these front loop doubles, you're gonna be bringing them in one for the next row because here we are. So you do your front loop doubles, front loop doubles. And now you have this one that you're not gonna be doing a front loop double in. This is now a single, so you do your back loop single. There's nothing to secure in the back. So then you tuck. Next is this tail here. You do your back loop. Push that down under your crochet hook. Back loop. And single. So now you have your here back loop. So zoom in here. Back loop. Push that tail down. Back loop. Whoops. I didn't get that back loop, back loop, push the tail, back loop, and single, back loop, now bring in your tail of the same color, back loop, over your crochet hook, like that, so your tail's right here, and there's your loop. So then you single over that. I like to do it twice. So your underneath of that into the back loop of your previous pattern color row, and single. And then the rest of the row, so the last two, I like to just tuck it down into that channel. So back loop, push it down, back loop, single, back loop. Make sure both of those tails are inside and back loop. Then do your single. And then for this, since the framing color is in the front, if you were to tuck this um, like this, it would come back here. You don't want that because that color does not match. So bring this tail up with its same color and just make sure you go over it. So then you do your both loops, single, chain, cut, and secure. And then just give this one a little tug so that it's there. Then when you come through, like you did with this one here, you're just gonna tuck that in and then you just keep doing this every single row and you secure your ends close up your back so what now that all of your ends are secured as you went all you have to do is cut the tails and make it neat and then it's done that is one of the methods i like to do you can't see the 
the tails. They're all secured right away. This one is the only one you would have to weave in from your, um, you know, foundation row. Pretty much this one and the last one at the top when you finish your diamond is the only things you would have to weave in. And the rest of them you just cut because they're already technically weaved in. And then that's the first method. Now the second method has, this is the front. So you see your doubles that you get from, you know, do working the front loops. But you can also get your doubles on the back. So you can see these are doubles as well. So this technique is just slightly different. It is almost the same, just slightly different. So you take your both loops, pattern color, then all right, so both loops Bring your tail forward. Chain, single. This one is also at the halfway point. So the next pattern row comes in one. So we are gonna give this a tail a little tug just to make that neat and tidy then your front loop double making sure you take that tail and secure it at least minimum two times and then you can that tail back, do your double, and you know this part, front loop doubles. So now to get that double effect in the back, you're essentially going to be working doubles, but you have to account for these loops. So instead of only having one loop to worry about, you also have these loops. So you go into the back loop, change the angle here so you can see. Okay, so You're gonna go through the back loop here, like you would do a back loop single. Bring your yarn over like you would for a double. Bring it over. Then you go through the back loop oops, of that previous pattern color row. Pull it through just that back loop. Do your first double pulling through all three of those loops. So you do your double, but then bring it up through that first back loop of the pattern color. Then when you do this, you put your single on top. So you do 
When you do a double, you're essentially doing two singles on top of each other. So you do a single, single, and then it makes it taller. So here, that second pull through of your double creates the single on top of this row. So let's do that again. Back loop, yarn over, back loop, pull it through, and one, two. There, you could do it a little simpler if you want to. That's how I do it because this way is takes a little longer. So you do your yarn over, grab that back loop, do your first pull through. So you have both loops. Take your hook off, go through your back loop here, grab that and pull it through that back loop and then do your single. You can do it that way, but I personally like doing it this way because it, I drop a lot of stitches when I do it the other way. Um, just because you're taking your hook out and all that. So back loop, yarn over, back loop, pull it up, do your first pull through, do your second pull through. Back loop, yarn over, back loop, pull your loop up, one, two. Back loop, yarn over, back loop. You see, with practice, it, it gets easier. It seems a little awkward at first, but you get this really nice effect that you have a double-sided blanket and that you took the time to make two blankets and then stick them together. When in reality, all you did was two sides of doubles. So back loop, yarn over, back loop, pull your loop up, one, two. Back loop, yarn over, back loop, pull your loop up, one, two. Back loop, yarn over, back loop, loop up, one, two. Or like I said, you could just yarn over, grab that bottom loop, do your first pull through, Grab that front loop of the pattern color, pull that loop through, and then do your single. But back loop, yarn over, back loop, yarn up, one, two. You just do this and confused myself. <laughs> Back loop, yarn over and back loop and double. 
and then one more back loop yarn over back loop pull through and one two and you have then you go back to your front loop doubles and secure that tail and then making sure you you grab at those last couple stitches you know and then your last stitch since this one goes to the back, you can put your hook, flip the tail, single chain, cut, secure, give this one a little tug so it's nice and tidy. And now you have your doubles back here. So then you just work the pattern the same. You work the pattern the same. So it's it's just a matter of doing those doubles in the back or the singles in the back. So um, just grabbing that that back um, stitch, you know. So then, here's your other tail that's going to be secured in the channel that you create. So with the doubles, these little tails get a little confusing, so I just do the first one. So yarn over, back loop, yarn over, make sure that tail is there, grab your other back loop. Bring your yarn up, do your first and your second. Then you can just tuck that tail in right there, no problem. So back loop, yarn over, back loop, and do your double. Just making sure that your your tails are tucked in, that way you don't have to worry about them too much later. So then, back loop, yarn over, back loop, Pull the loop through and do your double one. Two. Back loop. Yarn over, push those tails down. Back loop. And work your double. back loop, yarn over, push those tails down, and grab that other back loop, and do your double. See how your tails are gone. Now this diamond starts going in, and you just work your back loop double since there's no second row back here. You don't have to worry about doing that securing of the back row. Do your single back loop, front loop doubles,
I like these methods because when I go to a craft show or give a gift, those open backs seem very messy to me and I know it's part of the technique but uh, I do find that because it is a little messier people don't tend to look at them they, when they flip it over that's it and um, while the front is amazing and beautiful they see a messy back like I, it's not finished so I played around and found that you could do these two different things to close it up and make it a lot neater. So now we're coming in, so you're back loop single. Um, let's see. Yarn over, back loop, yarn over. Just push that framing tail down and do your double and I'm gonna do it a couple times because and then now you're gonna secure this this little tail and yarn over Make sure that tail's there. Grab your back loop. Secure that tail. And do your double. And then you could just do it the one time. You could do it two times. Um, and then just make sure you tuck that tail in. So this last one, I'm just gonna go push that tail down, grab that back loop, and do my double. Now this one, this tail needs to come to the front so it can be secured in the next row. And so I push that forward both loops, single, chain, and secure. Now the same goes for the, you just have these little things from securing your tails. And just cut them off. And you have a very finished product from closing up that back. It just gives it that last touch of professionalism I guess I find it a lot neater so this is the doubles this is the singles so like I said it depends on what you're working on you can see the size difference these are both at the exact same point in the pattern so these these two are different sizes because they're worked differently. Those singles in the back don't get as tall as a, as a double, but it gives it a nice look, nice pattern. So this could work really good for like if you're working on a purse or something like that, because this is a tight stitch. It gives it that double layer so that, you know, it would, you would have to work really hard to get push something through here let's like say you're it's in a purse it's not splitting it's not 
it's going to hold on to whatever's in that purse if you're not lining it. Um, so that's the singles, just grabbing that back loop. And then this is the doubles. Has a nice finish. It is slightly bigger, like I said, same point in the pattern, exact same point. And look at the size difference. Now this is the one worked without closing up the back. So we are here. It's even a little bigger than so this pattern, we're at this row right now. So adding those doubles in the back does give you, the slight purple's also slightly softer than my dark one, but see the difference in size of the different techniques. So like I said, it really depends on what you're making what you're doing with it and those are the two techniques I use to close up the back these are a lot neater than taking a needle and coming back here and going and going through and and you know sewing up that back so there you go singles Okay, so when you get to the last row, you're going to need to seal off the last edge that will be there. So even in this method, you still have the last edge. So then this one is the singles. So I use the same color as the foundation row and I just go across and do the singles. I already finished this one but for the doubles same thing you just use the same color as your foundation row or if you want you could do the pattern color. I just prefer the uniform look so you do your first stitch I secure my end and go do go about doing so this is the one that uses the doubles so You go through the top loop, yarn over, other loop, and do your double crochets. Securing your, and that way, you don't have that last edge over there giving your the back of your work that last finishing touch you know so when you go through I like to use the same color especially something like this with a very solid pattern and then it's totally framed. If it's something with designs or something like that you could even just continue that last one with a pattern color but 
when you go through and seal up this last um, row, you give your work that final touch. So this one's the doubles, so I'm doing the doubles. The other one was the singles, so I'm doing I did singles on that one. So I just finished it up with the method I'm using. Um, because it gives it that uniform look. And you just go across. I always make sure to tuck my tails in to that little channel that you create when doing this. That, that one was already secured into the stitches, so it is good. And then this one secures, so since these are different colors, make sure you secure it right there at the bottom because you're gonna wanna make sure that purple doesn't come up or whatever color you're using doesn't come up higher. And then I just tuck the rest of it down into the channel. gives your work this nice finish. So this last one, you can tuck this tail and then just weave it. I just totally slipped me. Get that secured into your stitches. So that is the last row and it gives your work that nice finish. So then just come through, cut all these ends. Once all these ends are cut, they're no longer, they're just tucked into your stitches and the channels and not really affecting your 
work anymore. So. Well, this is the back. You now have a piece that can be used either direction. So, you now have a piece that can be put in either direction. So now that all your ends are cut, just weave in these last tails and cut them. And your last rows all secured. You don't have pesky tails to deal with. Just keep in mind the different methods do make different sizes. So this is the pattern completed. This one is done with the single crochets in the back. Just grabbing those back loops and doing your single crochets as normal. And this one is going through and doing your doubles through the back. Happy crafting. Have a great day.